Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in Freshman English. We turn in your hymnals now to page 11, 34, 35, 36. Constantine Caffrey's Ithaca. Let's start first of all with um, um, Constantine uh, Caffrey's um, uh, biography information. It's not much on 1127 there. Uh, notice we're told, born to Greek parents in Alexandria, Egypt, Ithaca, the poem we'll be studying, showcases his creative method using Greek mythology to speak to the modern reader. Ithaca, let's say three things about this poem before we get started. One, of course, Ithaca is the island kingdom from where Odysseus left, went on his long journey, and then finally came back. Number two, Ithaca is one of the Ionian islands part of Greece, right? And during the time of Odysseus, Ithaca and the other Ionian islands, important for social, for political centers. The islands, they're very hilly, they're very green. People grow lots of olives, write that down, in grapes along with grains. Tourism brings many, many visitors to the beautiful warm waters around Ithaca, okay? Now in this reading, um, we're going to have our poet, um, Cavi, um, who will apply the image of the epic journey to everyone's modern life and underline the word modern life. Let's listen to a reading. We'll come back and we'll annotate. All right, here we go. Ithaca by Constantine Kavafi. When you start on your journey to Ithaca, then pray that the road is long, full of adventure, full of knowledge, do not fear the Lestragonians and the Cyclopes and the angry Poseidon. You will never meet such as these on your path if your thoughts remain lofty, if a fine emotion touches your body and your spirit. You will never meet the Lestragonians, the Cyclopes and the fierce Poseidon if you do not carry them within your soul, if your soul does not raise them up before you. Then pray that the road is long, that the summer mornings are many, that you will enter ports seen for the first time with such pleasure, with such joy. Stop at Phoenician markets and purchase fine merchandise, mother of pearl and corals, amber and ebony, and pleasurable perfumes of all kinds. Buy as many pleasurable perfumes as you can. Visit hosts of Egyptian cities to learn and learn from those who have knowledge. 1136. Always keep Ithaca fixed in your mind. To arrive there is your ultimate goal. But do not hurry the voyage at all. It is better to let it last for long years and even to anchor at the isle when you are old rich with all that you have gained on the way, not expecting that Ithaca will offer you riches. Ithaca has given you the beautiful voyage. Without her, you would never have taken the road. But she has nothing more to give you. And if you find her poor, Ithaca has not defrauded you. With the great wisdom you have gained, with so much experience, you must surely have understood by then what Ithacas mean. All right, let's turn now, and obviously we're working at level 2B right away. Ithaca clearly symbolizes something important in the Kavafi poem. Now, um, what is it that Ith Ithaca is going to symbolize? Well, let's play the game really quickly. And, uh, and we'll get a sense of it right away on, uh, on page 1135. When you, notice the immediacy of this poem, as if the poet speaker is speaking directly to you. When you start on your journey, notice the word journey gets used and not odyssey, right? Okay. When you start on your journey to Ithaca, pray that the road is long, in other words, it's the rest of your life, full of adventure, full of knowledge. These will be the gifts that you will get. Uh, uh, mentioned three of the stories. The Lestragonians, of course, are those cannibals that will eat some of Odysseus's men. The Cyclops we know of is Polyphemus, and of course, angry Poseidon, who is the father of, uh, of, uh, of Polyphemus, right? You will never meet such as these on your path if your thoughts remain lofty. In other words, put it in your notes. You're going to have a long journey, he says, I hope, 
but you'll never have to worry about the monsters, hopefully, uh, unless you carry them in your mind. The only monsters, in other words, of a modern journey are the monsters of the mind. We might say fear, we might say pessimism, we might say skepticism, right? If your thoughts remain lofty, if a fine emotion touches your body and your spirit, you'll never meet those monsters, right? If you do not carry them within your soul, if your soul does not raise them up before you. In other words, the only fears we have, FDR said, we're, uh, is fear itself. And here he's saying, the only monsters in the modern journey, in the modern epic, are the monsters you carry with you in your mind. Then he says, pray that the road is long. Summer mornings are many. Here are the gifts that will be a part of the journey. You'll enter port scene for the first time, sounding very much like some lines we'll study in our junior year from Whitman's Leaves of Grass. With such pleasure, with such joy from his song of the open road, Whitman's song of the open road, sounding very similar joy, right? Stop at Phoenician markets, purchase fine merchandise, mother of pearl, corals, amber, ebony. In other words, a listing of all the different things. Obviously, we can speak here. And this is not literally. In other words, he's not saying... Um, that you're going to pick up lots and lots of stuff, but have lots and lots of what? You're right, experiences. So let's write that one down, right? Pleasurable perfumes of all kinds. Buy as many pleasurable perfumes as you can. By the way, notice how the poet is eliciting all the five senses here. Visit hosts of Egyptian cities to learn and learn from those who have knowledge. Whoa, I would want to write that one down as an invitation. On your journey, pay attention to those who have knowledge and learn from them. What a great piece of advice to freshmen, right? Always keep, top of page 1136, Ithaca fixed in your mind. In other words, you got to have a goal, right? you got to have a goal. Um, um, Henry David Thoreau, in his classic Walden, you'll study in your junior year, another three observation, will say, if you've built castles in the air, leave them there. Now put the foundations under them. The idea here being that Ithaca is your goal. Keep it fixed in your mind, always wanting to get back, to get home. To arrive there is your ultimate goal, but do not hurry, right? Don't be too fast to want to grow up the voyage at all. So don't hurry the voyage, right? It's better to last, to let it last for long years and even to anchor at the aisle when you are old. Rich, with all that you've gained on the way, not expecting that Ithaca will offer you riches. In other words, true wealth is not what you gain, but what you share, right? The idea of experiences. Ithaca has given you the beautiful voyage. Without her, you'd never have taken the road. What a, I mean, what a brilliant insight, right? The, 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 the fact that Odysseus starts in Ithaca will bring him back to Ithaca, but in the 20 years that he's gone, all of the experiences, when we study together as seniors, uh, Tennyson's Ulysses, he'll say it, I am part of all that I have met. All of the experiences, right? But she has nothing more to give you. Ithaca, she, again he says, has given you the beautiful voyage. Without her, you would never have taken the road, but she has nothing more to give you coming back home. In other words, when you come finally back to Ithaca, You'll be totally changed at 3 at three A. Obviously, those of you who know The Alchemist, that great text, that, that wonderful parable story, you'll, you'll obviously appreciate this, right? And if you find her poor Ithaca, Ithaca has not defrauded you. In other words, you've, you've grown beyond Ithaca. You've grown beyond the, your goal. With the great wisdom you gain, we're back to learn from people with experience. With so much experience, you must surely have understood by then what Ithaca means. The idea, in other words, is you define your life as a journey. And certainly, no question, this is the power of Homer's Odyssey. To look at it as a physical journey, but more importantly, of course, as a intellectual journey, we might say, or a spiritual journey for that matter, right? Where we try and figure stuff out. Alright, let's jump to 2A uh, really quickly here. Well, life is a journey, right? I mean, a year ago you were, uh, what, in middle school, now you're in ninth grade. That is to say, I'm on this journey where I have all these different kinds of challenges. The monsters, granted, are not like polyphemus, something that can eat you. But we do have monsters. We do have challenges. We do have things we have to, com we have to fight against, right? Combat, no question. Life is a journey. Make sure you get as many experiences as you can, right? Thoreau, again, will say in Walden, I wanted to live deep and suck out the marrow of life. In other words, life is like a bone, a dog on a bone. I wanted to get all the way to the center of it, to have as many experiences as one can have. 
um, that idea of living life to the fullest, in other words, right? And having a goal, Ithaca, and working hard to get back to your goal, but recognizing that when you achieve your goal, there's always another goal, right? There's always something else. In other words, Odysseus comes home, and then he finally makes it, but then what? Well, we don't know. There's a lot of stories about then what, right, that, that will follow afterwards. At level 2B, well, obviously the symbolism of Ithaca is the ultimate symbol, the symbol of two things, the journey and, of course, the goal of the destination. And, of course, in the end, it isn't the destination. It isn't getting back to Ithaca. It's the journey that matters, right? At level 2A, so many different ideas come to mind. I've mentioned already a number of titles. And when you're a senior, we will study together Alfred Lord Tennyson's Ulysses. And that one, I cannot rest from travels. I will drink life to the lees. Uh, that notion of life is like a, 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 a nice drink, and you've got to drink it all the way to the bottom. Live it all the way, right? He will say in that poem, to follow knowledge like a sinking star beyond the utmost bounds of human thought. It's a brilliant, poetic way to say, you've got to keep living your life all the way through. Finally, at, at, at 3B, well, to what degree is your life, as you understand it, a journey or an odyssey, what has been those gifts? What's the central gift that you have experienced as a freshman in high school? What's been the, what's been the monster? What's been the polyphemus? What's been the, the, the monster? Has it been somehow related to fear? Fear to try something? Fear to fail? Fear to succeed? Well, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed the poem Ithaca, a classic example of how you can take a t a, a, an old text and make it modern. Thank you.